Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Sorry for the delay there, I pushed the wrong button. For those of you who are already in the chat and wondering what I was doing, or anything like that. But here are some blue death fanning beetles. The one on the left is the male, one on the right is a female. This is uh, one of my breeding group that I have. A couple of from my breeding group. Unfortunately, I accidentally wiped off a little bit of their blue coloring, but that is of course temporary. It'll come back in a few days. I see that Wally is already in the house from Supreme Gecko. Excellent. Thank you for joining in so fast, Wally. First one in. I am doing this uh, beetle update because um, Isaac S., one of my Patreon backers, just recently joined and I asked him, well, what kind of things do you want to see? What are, and this is one of the species he mentioned that he'd really like to see. So I was excited to be able to share these with him and tell you a little bit about things, how they're doing. And David Craig, hi from Northern Ireland. Greetings. I'm glad you're uh, joining us. It must be a lot later where you are. I'm not sure exactly what time it is, but it must be pretty late. So I appreciate you joining in. Um, the blue death fang beetles have been doing well, producing lots of larvae for me. I'm going to show you a larva in just a second here. I'm going to put down the adults and we'll get a larva going. Just set them there for the moment. Here's one of my larger larvae. It's not fully sized yet, not to the size of pupation, but it's getting there. I would say it's more than halfway to pupation size. You'll notice, as I mentioned in other videos, it's feigning death, just like a, an adult. It'll sit there completely still for a while, and then it will usually start nibbling on me, and that's how I know it's fine. Um, the abdomen, if you look at the, the shape of the abdomen, is really pretty unique in comparison to, say, a mealworm or a superworm. It's not nearly as pointed. It's very rounded at the end, and the coloration is kind of paler, especially on the head. I don't know if you can see that extremely well, but the head coloration is quite a bit different. Oh, now it's starting to move around. There it goes. So, pretty cool. Right, and there's little Bob. Nice. So, I hope that uh, it's working okay that you can kind of see what's going on. Sorry my hands are so dry this time of year. You can see all the cracks and crevices in my hands as I'm trying to adjust. So, yep, these are the blue death feigning beetles. Um, called that because they're bluish in color and they feign death. And Scott H. is also in the house. Nice to see you here. So I'm going to put the larva back in, but I'm going to show you the enclosure that I'm using for the larva. This is uh, mostly sand mixed with organic compost and fallen leaves. And I feed them all kinds of things from squash and carrots to dried river shrimp, bits of fish food, that kind of thing. Seems to be working really well. So yes, this larva is just a baby. Uh, it's got about, like I was saying, about half of its growth to still do a little bit less than that probably. Here is an adult female and here's an adult male. The size correlation between males and females is not always this uh, diverse. There's quite a big a difference here but that's not consistent. You can get large males, you can get small females. It has more to do with what they ate, how much they ate when they were larvae and what size they consequently pupated at. So just in case anybody's wondering about that. Um, okay, let's see. Hey Josh, I do have reptiles. I have, let's see, we have a leopard gecko, several crested geckos, a breeding colony of morning geckos, a corn snake, and three red-sided California garter snakes. So yeah, that's, that's what we've got in terms of reptiles right now. So. And thank you. I think they're pretty awesome beetles too. So, how long from egg hatch to pupae, then from pupae to beetle? I've heard that it varies a lot, but I want to say anywhere from like five months to a year for the whole process, from what I remember. Something like that. Reptiles and fish short. I just got Australian whites, tree frogs, and day gecko, and I'm going to be breeding them. Cool. Day geckos and white tree frogs are both species that I would be interested in keeping. I think they're very cool. White tree frogs being, you know, if you're going to handle an amphibian, they're one of the amphibians, not that most amphibians don't really do really well with handling, but white tree frogs can tolerate it more than many. And, oop, hold on, got to catch a beetle here. Um, 
Okay, so size at pupation, the beetles are about, I mean the, the larvae need to be approximately two inches long. And they can be a little less than that and you can get smaller beetles. But you know what, I'm having a hard time. I'm going to switch things around. Uh, okay, just a second folks. I'm going to switch things around a little bit because I'm having a super hard time reading the chat. So I'm going to do this. Just kind of move things about for a moment so I can focus more on the chat. Okay, so there you go. And JT, greetings from Spain. Nice to, nice to see you here. Thank you for joining in. Soprano cicada, babies, I really got to commit my parents to get me one. They're so precious. They're pretty awesome. David Craig is a scorpion keeper. How many scorpions do you currently have? I have two scorpions. I have a Paravihovis confusus, also known as the Coahuila devil scorpion. And I have a Heterometrius. Not sure exactly which species, but it's an Asian forest scorpion. There are a lot of species of those out there. Um, so it is one of the Heterometrius genus. And it is a scorpling. The Confusus is, the Paraviohobus Confusus is an adult. And the other one is a scorpling. And it's gone through two molts with me. And I think it had gone through one or two um, before that. And, oh, Jordan has a fire salamander. Those are pretty awesome. And... Josh got a baby northern blue tongue skink. That is something. I love blue tongue skinks. That would be on my bucket list of reptiles to keep too. Um, Old Crow, your videos are fantastic and so informative. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Hey, Laurelyn, yeah. would you do me a quick favor? Do you have a second? Yeah. Would you put these two beetles back in the main enclosure? Okay. Big 20 gallon and just make sure the lid's on tight. That would be lovely. Okay, they just, they don't want to play right now. They want to, they're uncomfortable sitting in my hands. I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Little Bob, my old one was a vegetarian for some reason, completely different to most lizards. Yeah, that is interesting. And Don Gallagher's in the house. Nice to see you here. Ooh, have a Halimera blue tongue skink. Nice. Well, what happens when you fill up your 10 gallons and have no room, no more room for plants? Another tank? I think so. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> when I started doing that, that's when I started selling plants on Aquabid back in the day. I don't really sell plants on Aquabid anymore, uh, but I used to sell aquarium plants on Aquabid because I would do that. One thing I'd like to do, I, I had a 10 gallon, not 10 gallon, well, I did have a 10 gallon, but I also had a 20 gallon in my office at work and I'd, I'd get some... I'd go buy some Malaysian driftwood and I'd plant it with uh, things like mostly java fern types. I'd, I'd do some cool java ferns like java fern, the, uh, the, what do you call that one? Lace java fern a lot. Plant it, let it grow out, look really cool, and then I'd sell it and then do it again. So I could make some money from the tank. It was kind of fun. Soprano cicada. I've always wanted a pet beetle of some sort and the blue death fin beetle is my dream bug for sure. I really hope I can get one. Yeah, you should get more than one. Like get a trio at least, because they're more fun when you get have when you have more than one, or or put some other desert beetles with it, and that would be cool. But I hope you're able to get some. And TJ's Exotus had a wolf spider. It got so big after I kept it. It was breeding season. I released it back in the wild so it could breed. Well, that's good. Whoa, Ireland's biggest spider is the size of your hand, little Bob. That's pretty awesome. And I'm not sure how to say your name. Apathix. Yeah, if you uh, have isopods, I think you'll like beetles. <laughs> Musty beetle boys. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, this tank? Yeah, I, can, I, I don't know which one is the left to you right now. I'm confused. But they're fun. Uh, we should take a look at them real quick. Let's do that. Should we do that? I think we should. Let's just do it. It's more fun that way, right? We're just a little spontaneity. Sorry, didn't mean to make you look at my face. I'm just, oh, my cord is tingling everywhere and the ceiling is in my... Okay, I might. Can you help untangle me from that mess? That would be lovely if you can. Oh, I knocked the light over, sorry. That's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. That bulb is resilient. Okay, let's take a look at the tank. There's a frog right there. That's my male, my male uh, 
we're all great there. Sorry, the reflection's kind of messing with things. That's, that's probably good enough. That'll do it, I think. Let's take a look inside, shall we? Got some moss. I think the last time I did a live stream, I showed off some of this moss that Heather Jensen sent me. And the liverworts. This one's really doing nicely there. I've got some oak leaf figs starting to sprout finally. It's been a while. This liverwort's starting to pick up over here. Some mosses over here. They look like they need a little water again. Some more mosses over here. Yeah. And then I've got my bromeliads, of course. Um, let's see. I'm going back to the text. I mean the, not the text. The chat. The what? The light keeps falling. Oh, the stand needs to be spread out a little bit. If you could do that for me, that'd be great. Um, yep, I agree, George Fleming. Always room for one more. Wow, you have a baby rhino iguana and a blue tongue. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's look at this one too. This one is... Oh, I'm going to close the dart frog. Don't want anybody getting out of there. Um, this is a crested gecko. This is not my first bioactive vivarium, maybe my second. So there are things I don't like about the build, but it's pretty cool. Um, I love this ficus pumula growing all on the back, although I need to trim it. Here's the inhabitant, Tiki the crested gecko. And then it's got a bunch of philodendron and stuff growing all along the bottom. And a, a snake plant sensivaria over there. And that's, you know, the lower light plants are thriving because the ficus pumula has taken up all the growing room. Um, all right, so there you go. Let's see. And let's see, Abdurrahman Kennerly. Do you have any videos or advice on keeping crabs, land crabs specifically? I have kept uh, Soenbeta clypeatus, if that's how you pronounce it. It's kind of a hard name to pronounce. That's the uh, land hermit crab that is most often sold in the U.S., as well as the Ecuadorian hermit crab. I have kept those. It's been many years. And when I say many years, we're talking like 15 or more, probably. And so... I don't feel like I give you really update, updated information. I did have some successful molts, but at the time the information we had was not very good. So, so JT's thinking about getting some morning geckos and try breeding them. I have already done my research, watched your videos, and many more on their care and read online. Good. Good. I think they're a fun one to get. Oh, thank you, little Bob. I even trimmed my beard for the occasion because it was I was starting to look like a lion or something. My beard was getting nuts. It goes fast. So I trimmed it right before the live stream. So any tips <coughs> with morning gecko? Excuse me. Sorry, I'm still getting over a cough. Um, let's see. In any particular area or just, uh, just general, general morning gecko tips? I'll tell you one thing. Um, keep them in an enclosure with a front a front opening enclosure is way better than keeping them in a top opening enclosure because they always lay their eggs on the lid if you don't. Or at least they do it often enough that it's a problem. Um, and yes, the escape routes, if you do use an exoterra enclosure, for example, make sure to plug up those little holes in the back with wet paper towel and then it will um, it will kind of harden and they can't get through that. Reptiles and fish were a hundred gallon paludarium. That's awesome. And yes, how Jordan, can you convince someone the ice pods are more than just bugs? <laughs> well, I don't know if people are very open to that, but one thing you can do to just show them that they're super cool, show them the different color variety and stuff. That might get them going. That I've noticed people are really surprised when I show them. Oh look, they have zebra stripes. Oh look, they have red borders and white and yellow polka dots, that kind of thing. And, yeah, oh, sorry. Um, okay, and this wood, um, Bible WP was talking about this wood. This I collected in California on the property of, used to be my wife's parents' property until they moved away from it. And uh, 
For the movement, I collected some of this manzanita wood for vivariums. It's great stuff. That was a long time ago. How do I light these tanks? Well, this one is lit by a Tinkman Herp bulb. It looks like I need to clean the glass, dust it off a little bit. Tinkman Herp bulb, I bought it from the BioDude online. If you go to the BioDude, Josh Halter, he sells these. I love these. this bulb. It's awesome. And then this one, I think these are Jungle Dawns, or is it, no, it's one Jungle Dawn, and then one just 26 watt compact pyrofluorescent 6500K or 5000K, I'm not sure which one's in there right now. But this one is a Jungle Dawn bulb. I like them a lot. I've got several Jungle Dawns, and I've got a couple of the Tinkman Hurt bulbs, and I love them both. They're great. Um, all right, let's take a look. Um, Salvo. Oh, hey, Salvo's in the house. Welcome, Salvo. Do you have a wild gecko where you live? There are loads here. I have to admit I'm pretty ignorant on them. I don't know what's their scientific name. My cat Lucy sometimes brings some of them. <laughs> well, there's only one gecko species native to my state and only to the southwestern corner of the state. Um, it is the banded gecko. Colyonyx uh, is the genus name. I can't remember the species name right now. They look a lot like mini leopard geckos. They're related to them. Same subfamily of geckos, so they have eyelids and they have a, a tail they store fat in and so on. They're mm, basically terrestrial. So they're pretty cool, but we don't have uh, any other geckos native to this state. Uh, I'm pretty sure in your area, Salvo, in Sicilia, they have, um, what do you call them? Medi uh, the Hemidactylus turcicus, the Turkish Mediterranean house gecko or the Turkish gecko. Um, pretty sure they have those there. And in Sicilia, they probably have other species. I know where I was in Italy, they had uh, the Hemidactylus turcicus, but they probably have some others um, down south too. And thank you, Wally. Do you keep desert millipedes? If so, how do you keep them? I have one desert millipede that somebody gave me, and I keep them the same as the other ones with just a little bit more ventilation. So if you know how to take care of most millipedes, that's about what I do. Cool. So TJ's Exotic, you're going to do a hermit crab video? Um, let's see. I'm trying to catch up. All right. Garbage. Do I have a Manticora tiger beetle? No, but I would love one. I know I, w I watched the Spider-Man's videos on those. They're pretty new nice. Um, okay. <laughs> On isopods, Supreme Gecko did a show this week and half people went, oh great, isopods, the other half went, oh, ooh, isopods. That was okay. Yeah, that's kind of what you get. <coughs> Liam ordered cork from the BioDude, positive experience. Awesome. I w we have our uh, leopard gecko bioactive setup. We ordered most of the supplies from, for that from him as well as the light for my dart frog enclosure. So yeah, I've had positive experiences with him. Okay, excellent, Bible WP. Um, and happy Thanksgiving to you and thanks for joining in. Um, and Supreme Gecko. They are underrated and I love your videos on that genus that you have. Um, on the Coleonyx genus. Unfortunately, my understanding is that I cannot c collect them because they come from my state. I don't, I don't believe I'm allowed to collect them. Um, I could look into a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure that's what I understand. And Cat Milford, do you keep any ant species? What are your favorite? I do, I'm not, not right now, I don't. I keep velvet ants, which are not true ants, they're wing wingless wasps, but I have, I should say, kept ants. I had a colony of ants that I started from a trio of queens I collected, and when the queens got a little older and the colony was doing a little better, uh, one queen killed the others, which I understand is normal. I don't know what species it was, it's just a locally collected species, but I had the colony for several years and it was cool. I liked it. Ike E sent a super chat. That is awesome. Thank you, Ike. And just saying cool. So I love it. If you do have a question you'd like me to address, Ike, I would be happy to, but if not, that's fine too. Okay. Um, my, uh, my stats up at the top are weird. It says I have three people watching and two likes, and I know that's not true. 
So if anyone wants to fill me in on what actually is going on, I would love it. So Apathic says, I have a tub I was using for Ligia exotica, which are kind of, um, a, well, I would say estuarine isopod. They didn't do very well, so I think it's mostly sand. I'm going to revamp it for a hermit crab. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I, they're, I've heard they're pretty tough, actually, to, to take care of. Cloud 9.5, hello, and Austin Blanchard. I do. We have four crested geckos, one leopard gecko, a breeding colony of morning geckos, which probably number somewhere around 15 right now, including the babies. Maybe more than that, actually. Um, and there you go. Those are my geckos. HC Aqua in the house. Scott says there were 30 and then 23. Okay, mine's messed up then. <laughs> And 31 and 24. Mark Lehman in the house. Nice. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for the update. My um, stats are fried up there, I guess. Uh, they're not true to life, so I will ignore them because they're not helping me figure out what's actually going on. I'm going to close the lid. It looks like Tiki's off to wander a little bit, so I'm going to close her up. And maybe, just maybe, I will try chatting again. I can make it work just sitting down and chatting because that's going to be a little bit more comfortable for me at this point. Sorry, I'm just covering up the screen. That's terrible when I do that. I don't mean to. But there we go. We still have the tanks in the background. Put the light over there so hopefully we can see a little better. And a live chat. Let's see. Get going here. Okay, I'm just catching up. Um. Let's see. Yes, Colanix very goddess. That's the same one we have. That is. I just couldn't remember the species name. Thank you, Don, for that. That is the same one. It may or may not be a different subspecies, but it's the same species for sure. Perplaneta missionary. How, how are your preparations for keeping Polistes wasps? Haven't done much yet, but I think they're pretty cool. I saw one on Instagram the other day, and that was awesome. Um, Kat Milford's keeping seven different species of ants. Campanotus nicobarensis, Polyrachis dives, three queen colony. Awesome. Hello, bat. Hmm. And yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I'm glad you like them. It's kind of fun stuff, isn't it? Um, Ike, what pets do you recommend for someone who travels a lot like a desert invertebrate? Well, blue deathwing be beetles. Or be a great one because you can, if you need to leave uh, for a week, just give them some juicy veggies before you go and, and some other proteinaceous food, and they're fine for a week. They'd be fine for longer once in a while. I wouldn't leave them for more than a week often, but if you needed to do that once in a while, that'd be okay. Um, they can actually survive at least a month, or well, longer than a month. The research they've done on them, they can survive longer than a month without food. Not that I would want to subject them to that very often, but if you have to go for a week at a time here and there, I just feed them well and hydrate them well before you go, and I think they'd be fine. And Pinchman, nice to see you in the house. Ratty, just want to say thank you, love your videos, I follow your substrate recipe, my desert millipede, absolutely love it. Much love, Russ. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm really glad that that helps. I learned the basics of that recipe from uh, Mickey M on Arachno Boards, she's also on YouTube, and she, uh, she had a recipe and I couldn't quite source all the ingredients, so I changed mine a little bit, but it's based on hers and I love it. I think it's the greatest one I had. Um, okay, Supreme Gecko, he has a special request. He would like to see my multis. Okay, I probably should have cleaned the glass for this. Um, hey, Laurelyn, can you help me out? Yes. Sorry, folks, I'm just gonna need to, can you unplug the mic, see how they're attached right there? And just give me this one. Very cool. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to unplug this. Sorry about the mic noise that I'm potentially creating. I just, I have my mic essentially off. Um, okay. So, going through the chat as I head down the hall in the dark. All right. Regarding to the stats on the video, watching on my phone and my boyfriend is watching on the TV, there's a three second delay between our devices. Oh, okay. That could be that there's some kind of delay going on there. All right, let's take a look. Um, the last time I counted, I have 11 fry in here. See, I've got a little bit of algae on the glass, but hopefully you can see what's going on. Over here, two um, 
clutches are fry. I think I showed you these last time, but the clutches are bigger. I mean, it's not just one, two clutches. It's two territories with multiple clutches in them, but about 11 fry. I think there are like three or four clutches going on. So that's pretty cool. I don't know. I just fed them a little while ago, so the fry may or may not come out in just a minute. Usually they really come out when I just feed them. But we'll see if we can get... Oh, there's an adult kicking around. We'll probably get a, a fry somewhere or two showing up. Um, let's see. Okay, RJ Robinson in the house. Awesome. And cat. Yes, reptiles are amazing, but so are ants. you got to pick what fits your lifestyle at the time, right? And maybe you can get back into snakes at some point. And yes, Don, these are Neolampologus multifaciatus. That one in right in the smack in the middle of the screen right now, she's one of my F... Uh, twos. So I'm glad she is because she's producing a lot of the fry in here. And I think, not entirely sure, but I think the female in the back there, the little one hovering up in the back, is also one of the F2s and she's producing a lot of fry. So I'm excited about that because I think the other F2s that I bought, bought four of them. And I think the other two are males. They are younger males, so they haven't established territories yet. But anyway, they, they often hang up in the back there by the filter. But the colony is pretty big. I think there are somewhere in excess of 30 fish in here. And it's pretty exciting. They're doing so well. And Jacob Smith. You don't own reptiles or insects, but you absolutely love the channel. That's great. I love that. That's, that's one of the things I love to hear because maybe you can vicariously get some. Oh, there's one of the older fry. See that one? It's about in the middle of the screen right now. It's one of the older fry. There's a lot that are smaller. Oh, there's some in the back. I can see some of the fry kicking around in the back, too. So that's fun. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Can you see those little guys? I put some brine shrimp and microworms in here a little while ago, and they, they're they kind of full, so I don't really want to feed them again. And, yeah, the fry are growing pretty fast. I give them several feedings of microworms, brine shrimp, and powdered omega-1 flake food every day and that seems to really get them going that particular mixture I like it I would give them more brine shrimp than I uh, than I do now but my uh, the container that I get is getting near the end and the eggs are kind of a little bit old so I'm not getting the hatch rate I did when I first opened it because they say to eat it finish it off in three months and I didn't it's probably into month four now and so it's kind of slowing down I think I've got it on a heat pad and it helps, but... Mm. So Don, you need a tank of Shelly's in your life someday. You do. You do, they're so fun. And I think I've had this one about three or four years now, somewhere in there, and it is just... It's always interesting to watch them. Oh, I just saw a female, little female spitting out some sand. Sorry, algae in the way. I need to scrape the glass. Shame, shame on me. Um, so Supreme Gecko, place your vote for the next Shell Dweller setup. Lamprologus Brevis. Those are cool. There's a pet store not too far away from me. It's about an hour drive, and I've seen them. They, they have those. They have a tank of those usually. They're pretty cool. That would be fun. They're more of a, if I remember correctly, more like you get a pair breeding rather than a colony breeding. But I think that would be fun. And I want to do Ocelotus too. Well, um, Slav Pepe, I really enjoy your content. You seem to be a really relaxed and methodical person with a genuine love for animals. It's so wholesome and your channel deserves so much more attention. Well, thank you. You know, lately I've been pretty excited because my channel has had a big spike in views in the last month or so. Really excited about that and hope to keep that going. Um, I've had in the last month about 1.3 million minutes of views on the channel, a lot. Um, so everything, all of my stats are up, and I think that's telling YouTube to keep showing my videos to people. So really excited about it, and I enjoy the fact that everybody is uh, so supportive of Aquarimax Pets. I really appreciate all of your help, and just watching helps a lot. I really appreciate it. And those of you who are um, supporting in other ways by being mods and with super chats and with Patreon backing and everything. That just, it really, really helps. 
So yeah, gold ocelotus, I think those are so amazing. That same pet store I was talking about a minute ago usually has a tank with a few of those in it. They're just, <coughs> they're mesmerizing. They're expensive, but they're mesmerizing. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about this, this cough. Hope I'm not blowing anyone's ears out. Oh, so Scott H., that's how you found it, huh? YouTube just brought up a <coughs> recommendation. It's been doing that a lot. I've been looking at my stats. <coughs> I'm really, really excited about it. And Salvo, are there... <coughs> <coughs> oh, I apologize. Are there raccoons in my area? Yes, there are. And can they be dangerous for the cat? Potentially. And that's really why we prefer him to sleep indoors. As far as we know, he hasn't had any run-ins with cats, but <coughs> I mean with raccoons. He has with <coughs> other cats. <coughs> Yes, I, I need to drink a little bit of water if I can get a hold of some. Um, so, this is Kel1. I recently got morning geckos, and your videos helped me so much in setting them up. Excellent. Well, Don, right now, fish wise, I don't have a ton of different species besides my, my Neos, my Neolampologus, my Maltese. I've got um, some Blue Star Endlers. I have a recent video on those, actually. So you can check that out. And then uh, the other one is, let's see, we've got a couple of goldfish we've had for years and years. And that's about it. And for me, that's kind of not very many because there have been times when I have many, many more species than that. But uh, now with I'm kind of you've been branching out into other things. And so that's not very many species at all, is it? I guess my daughter has, no, no, she just has, and she has Neocardiana shrimp in her tank, and I have other creatures too. I have, you know, assassin snails, and we've got other aquatic creatures. We've got an axolotl and things like that. But, uh, yeah, with the branching out into reptiles and whatnot, I don't have, I mean, I've been doing reptiles for years too, but I've been kind of doing more of it lately. Uh, and with the isopods and things like that, that's more of what I'm doing, I guess. So... Dendrobates leucomelis update. I need to do that, yeah. It, unfortunately, the lights have come off, but I do have a tadpole from the, um, from the Dendrobates leucomelis that is, looks like it's going to be, start, be starting to morph soon. Um, and Slav Pepe, I really like your time-lapse video of your isopods trying new food so much that my girlfriend and I ordered some isopods for ourselves. We would really enjoy another video in the same vein. Awesome. Well, I usually do every Friday, I do a feeding video of something. Maybe you saw my feeding video of the um, Damon Diadema, the tailless whip scorpion, from last week. I, I try to do that every month. I, I think I just said every Friday, and I didn't mean to do that. I do it every first Friday of the month. So once a month, I do a feeding video of some kind. So you will be getting some more in that vein, definitely. And some of them, I like to do time lapses with isopods when I test out new foods and things like that. I just posted a little thing on Instagram about that, in fact. I d decided to see if I could get a isopods to do a different feeding response between crushed eggshell, non-crushed eggshell, crushed cuttlebone, and non-crushed cuttlebone. I did a time lapse of that, and it turned out not quite how I thought, because usually the isopods totally swarm over the calcium, but they didn't do as much as I thought they would have. Um, so there you go. Uh, but they, they did eat some of the calcium of both types. So my results were inconclusive. I'm going to have to replicate that experience or experiment and see what happens. So thank you, Scott. I'm glad you enjoyed the whip scorpion video. Dream pet is a giant African millipede, but nowadays they're so expensive and rare. Do you know what happened? Yeah, they were importing them for quite a while and they're very, very common where they live. So that it's pretty easy to get a big supply in fairly cheaply. And then they were regulated by the government because a mite that lives on the millipedes in the wild can be a danger to certain agricultural crops. I think cotton is one of those, or at least potentially could be, was perceived as a potential danger to cotton crops or something like that. And so they have been regulated, they, the importation has stopped. So the ones you get here are now captive bred and they're not particularly easy to breed. They can be bred and people are breeding them, but they're not the most easy thing to breed. And so that's what has happened, just sad. And Laura 
Flieger, thank you for the tips on dwarf whites. My culture is doing amazing. I also have more springtails and I know what to do, do with. Perfect. That's awesome. Andrew Ewald. Hey, Russ, how many morning geckos could I house in a 75-gallon tank? Well, to give you perspective on this, this is what I tell people when they ask me this question. In, say, a 12 by 12 by 18, it's, it's good to remember that that uh, tank is a lot more effective space for a morning gecko than it would be for a lot of creatures because they're going to crawl on the ceiling and crawl on all the walls as well as the floor and any decor and plants you have in there. It's a lot of surface area for them that they're going to take advantage of much more so than many other creatures would. So they're getting a lot more space, a lot more bang for their buck in that, in that sense. So I personally would house up to six morning geckos in a 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra. And I know some people are not going to like that, but I find that they do fine like that as long as there are plenty of hiding spaces and they do need those. But I offer them and then they do fine. Um, so in a 75, you could get by with quite a few. I would not hesitate to keep a dozen in there or more. And as long as you've got plenty of hiding places. Um, yeah, iapathics. One thing to warn about with isopods. Now, this is the funny thing about the porcelio isopods. There's definitely an issue with the protein um, craving and the fact that they may chew on reptiles and amphibians, but we need more documentation in the hobby of uh, exactly what's going on there. I don't doubt that it happens, but I need to know more about it, and I want to know how often it happens with healthy reptiles and when it's happening with a reptile that died and then gets eaten and, you know... I'm <coughs> 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 sorry. I would be really interested in knowing more about that. So I would love to actually set up a website or something where people can post their experiences, documenting what exactly happened, so that we know more about it. And Mrs. Kell1, how do you judge if you need to add more isopods to a bioactive enclosure? My frogs love to eat them. I feel like it's so hard to tell if you have good enough because they're so good at hiding. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> True. Next time I'm bringing my water bottle and I set it right by me. Um, hopefully next time I don't have a cough. What I would do... <coughs> excuse me. Is put a piece of food that isopods would eat and nothing else in the enclosure would really eat at, you know, in the evening and then see how it is in the morning. And if they've taken a good uh, crack at it, you know you probably have enough isopods. Like a piece of bug burger, for example or maybe a slice of zucchini or cucumber or something like that, that the isopods are really going to go for. And if you notice, oh, yep, they've been doing a lot of chewing on that, or, it, or it's gone, then you know your isopods are doing fine. So Supreme Gecko, on that time-lapse video, felt that once the cuttlebone eggshell got off the wood and down to their level, they really nailed it. True, I like that suggestion of trying starting on the substrate. I think I'm going to have to do that. And in Wisconsin, your isopods probably don't need a warming mat. Um, if you have tropical species, you might need to do something with warming, but I wouldn't put the warming mat under it because that tends to both dry them out and a lot of invertebrates will burrow when they get warm and then when they get too warm, they'll burrow. And if they burrow down to the mat, they're going to get cooked. So I would say maybe put one on the side if you need to, but depending on the species, you may not need to at all. And so unless you're working with tropical species, I wouldn't bother with heating them at all. So hopefully that helps. Um, Oh, that's interesting. Okay. All right, so I'm going to get a drink. I think that's a great idea. Let me... Oh, you know what? I just realized how close I am to the end of this, uh, end of this live stream. I'm going to get a drink. But any last questions before I take off? Here, have a sip of water here. Ah, that's better. And here we go. I always feel so funny when we're doing that. Okay, so there we go. That's interesting that your ice pods clean up after your ants, that you can keep them together with your ants. I love that. If I ever do ants again, that's, I'm going to try that. So Don, it's pretty interesting giant African millipedes have a symbiotic relationship with mites. They provide the mites with food and the mites in turn keep their exoskeletons clean, which I think is super cool. So it's sad that we can't keep them anymore. So um, the powder blues are not tropical. They do like a little heat, but they'll do just fine at room temperatures if your house is not like super freezing. So I would go ahead and just 
let them do their thing. My house gets to about 68 Fahrenheit or so in the winter. My powder blues do fine. They might slow down on breeding a little, but probably not even that much. And Philip Moranio, keep up the great job. Thank you. And let's see. Yeah, I hope to have a really good video for Friday. I have some things planned, so hopefully that works out. And Larissa would be doing a video on cleaning your isopod enclosures. I actually did one. Uh, I did a, life, a live stream on that at some point. It's probably a couple months ago, so you can check for that. But I might do another video that's not a live stream specifically on that at some point. Evan Bulkow, you had an orchid menace with 67? Wow, that is awesome. I love that. That is super cool. Hmm. Oh, Mickey M's in the house as well. Nice. I was just talking about your substrate a while ago and how you taught me to make great substrate. Oh, I just saw a fish spitting sand out. I love the when the multis do that. Uh, so thanks again, Mickey M, for teaching me how to make that substrate. And even though I have to substitute some of the ingredients, it's the best substrate I've ever used, I think. So I always appreciate that. So yeah, poke around a little bit, Larissa, see if you can find that. And if you can't, maybe I just need to make another video about that about cleaning out the isopod enclosures. So, I'm afraid the time has come. I need to feed the snakes and I need to clean out the uh, cricket enclosure and I need to make another video. I got a lot of stuff going on. So, I guess I gotta go, but I'm glad you all uh, made it and look forward to seeing you in the next uh, video on Friday. Have a good night, everyone.